This is Frank Skinner on um, Absolute Radio with Emily Dean and Alan Cochran. You can text the show on 81215, follow the show on Twitter at Frank on the Radio, or you can email the show via the Absolute Radio website. Those are three options. There's probably other things. You could turn up. Turn um, up at number one Golden Square. Be careful. Okay. Is that a bad thing? I think... Be careful about that. Okay. Yeah, well, I think what, what, what do I do now? I've said it. Yeah. Okay. It's oh, not... That's your autobiography number four. <laughs> yeah, exactly. What do I do now? I've said it. <laughs> it's not that I fear for them. Uh, it's that I fear that they'll be disappointed. You know. That, oh, thanks. Don't, yeah. don't make your heroes. Think. I've made an effort today, <laughs> oh, yeah. actually. Yeah, don't make your heroes. You're right. Yeah. <laughs> um, we had a. Um, we we've got a running thing on this show. I've had a pretty good run of meeting yeah. heroes. Have actually. you? Yeah. Who have you How's met then? Oh, the ones queen. I've met. I mean, of all. The queen no, is that hero? well with the Queen, didn't she? Strange she was shouting here. Frank across the Albert Hall at him. I did used to carry a picture in my uh, in my pocket. Oh, oh yeah, man. lovely. Now I um, no, when I've met you know, you mean the note? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> when I've met um, boxers and footballers and stuff that I've liked, they've, I can't think of one that's really let me down. Oh really? The that's idea good. is to get them for about ten minutes, you know. Right. Yeah. Not you don't too long. Be, you don't get into a relationship with someone who's been your hero. No, but I don't know who that would be. Funnily enough, <laughs> Saul Abbott, I suppose. But, yeah, <laughs> maybe. But then I think she now um, runs an ostrich farm in Bloemfontein. Oh. I don't I think I could have lived like that. Oh. Still running. Is she? Oh, yeah. Glad to know you're not um, doing midnight frantic Googles on her. No, I... Um, <laughs> I, I was on to the shoot. How on earth did you know about I the watched, ostrich there's farm? A, there's a documentary with her and Mary Decker. Do you remember Mary Decker? I do. Who, um, I do. She do, fell over Zola's leg. Mary Decker leg. Slaney, was oh, yes. it? Yeah, she became, yeah. I think, Slaney. Married to Richard Slaney. Yeah. What if she'd have married somebody called Decker? She'd have been a double Decker. <laughs> <laughs> instead of a double barrel. <laughs> <laughs> if you could... Has anyone ever done that? Married someone with the same surname and still gone double barrel? <laughs> well, that'd be good. Yeah. yeah. So, um, if any, if you've ever heard of anyone who's done that, which you won't have, um, <laughs> so I'm not, no. not going to bother finishing even the, the sentence, which I think Ronnie Biggs once said. <laughs> <laughs> um, so. Uh, yeah, I've already I forgot what I was even talking about. You were about. talking about Zola Bard's oh, yeah, ostrich Zola Bard. farm in Bloemfontein. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Has in she moved the... on to footwear, Zola? Do you know that about her? Has she gone No, footwear? I saw in this documentary you see film... Because um, Mary Decker can't run anymore. She had some oh. sort of injury, so... Uh, well, yeah, Zola Bud tripped her over. From that she incident. did not trip her over. She <laughs> ran look into like her. It, didn't it? Oh, come on. Anyway, if you had bare feet, would you trip over someone in spikes? Good point. So um, that's why her plan was so masterful. <laughs> she still runs. <laughs> well, if you're around ostriches, you're going to run, whether you want to or not. True. Yeah. But yeah, still well. She'd be a prime candidate for those um, barefoot shoes that people have, wouldn't she? So all good. What are she should have had a our barefoot shoes. You know, those, those ones where the individual toes. Yeah, oh, yeah. they make me sort absolutely of. sick. <laughs> I've got a pair. I know a lot oh. of people that have. Oh, that makes it better. I don't go. I don't go out them. in them. I must admit. You don't? Have you really no. got a pair? Yeah, but, I, you know, I picked them up and box she. That's what, that's Gratis. The, the word they sent all use. sorts of stuff. <laughs> I haven't heard that word, box she, for ages. No. But, yeah, anyway, got them free. Okay. Anyway, this won't uh, put the uh, put Rob Bonnet on um, uh, the ITV Sports Show. So let's um, move on. We uh, We had an email yesterday morning. Strangely. Yesterday morning. Friday, 9 30 a.m. Does it yeah. say Dear Dave Berry? No. Okay. It, it says Big Moment. Um, and then it continues. You know that we've, we've talked oh, about yeah. this. This is when someone tells you something they think you won't know, and it's usually a thing that everybody knows. Okay. Yes. The original big moment was just shared in my office. Not one person was unaware of the fact. I described it as a big moment to an office full of non-readers of the show, to much confusion. Praise redacted, Jack. What was it? The original big moment. The big mm. moment was oh. Gary Oldman's oh. sister. And every one of them knew it. Every single person in his office already knew it. But, but that's none the of them, point. That's exactly Yeah, that it, it was yeah. a successful... But yeah. some, you might think it's a numbers game that one person wouldn't know, but no. Everyone, the whole. I, I had, uh, I had a bit of a, another thing, uh, an idiotic eureka moment this week when you oh, yeah. suddenly notice something. Oh, I heard someone. So is that my phone? I think it might have been. I think it, it was. was. Oh, yeah. Daisy! It's it, oh, it Daisy. Daisy, my, um, Was it an email through? 
Shall I tell you what it is? Was it GDPR? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love them. Do you know they're like a needy ex? I love them for that. It is good how begging them Please don't getting. leave us. This um, is your last chance. Yeah. I'm not uh, asking again. No, well, I, last I, chance was never the last that. chance, was it's it? It's actually... Yeah. Um, I, I, it's the um, Oxford Dictionary of Philosophy app. Oh, excellent! Um, word of the day has just <laughs> come through. Do you know what? Want to know what it is? It's a why, don't you, why don't you just get Tesco loyalty things like the rest of us? It's, it's always like um, who alerts or poetry corner. The word of the day is macrocosm. Oh, excellent! Oh, lovely. But, um, we'll leave it there. I think. Um, if I'll keep you not next week, so. <laughs> Word of the day, I'll keep you. What if I do that every week? I like that. The Oxford <laughs> Philosophy apps. I like that. Day. Yeah. There is a definition, isn't there? They don't just leave you hanging. Oh, that'd be good. Oh, God. No. Not at the, um, the OPA. <laughs> Absolute. Absolute. Absolute Radio. Frank Skinner on Absolute Radio. What was you? Oh, I was on about my idiotic Eureka moment. Oh, yeah. And do you remember, it may have been last summer... Uh, Emily, maybe it was the summer before. Mm. I um, I run out of uh, free sunglasses and found myself <laughs> in a, the predicament where I had to buy a pair. <clears throat> Outrageous! Yeah. And um, I remember it well. And so you took me to um, a shop. Oh. Now, what shop? This story gets worse. I think I believe it was called the Sunglass is it Sunglasses Hut. Yes. Well, because um, I remember you liked the. I think you thought it was going to be some tiki hut, and exactly, I thought <laughs> right. it was going to be um, a, a barn, some kind of a yeah. barn, and we'd have or, lays. I tell you what, I thought you. it would be. I thought it would be an outbuilding. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but no, it wasn't. It's um, a building. It's a brick building. Often. It is. It's a shop. Yeah. yeah. Are you familiar with? Um, yeah. Sunglasses Hut. Yes. Yeah, I thought I was, and then I saw one the other day, and I thought, hold on, it's not sunglasses hot at all. It's sunglass hot. That's no. what it's called. Oh. And I thought, yeah. what is sunglass? That's a thing you never hear. <laughs> is that what the stuff in sunglasses is? And oh. it's because you got two pieces of sunglass. It's, it's, they are sunglasses. Is that what? Yeah. That? But it's called the sunglass. <laughs> like some of, I mean, as you know, I've, I've read Treasure Island recently. It felt like some of you might get like spyglass or something. Yeah. Yes. And who knew? Because it's a pair of sunglasses. It's never in the singular. No, exactly. I mean, could you get... First of all, is there such a thing as sunglass? Is that what that stuff is called? <laughs> yeah. And could you get um, a sunglass monocle? <laughs> <laughs> Probably so. Say if you walk to work in, in, in the morning and um, the sun uh, comes on one side of the street and then when you walk back, it's moved over to the other. So you could just have a monocle <laughs> one for the walk out and then when nice. you walk back, you could switch, um, switch monocles over. Yeah. I mean, you'd need, obviously you'd need the same prescription, but I suppose if it was a sunglass thing, you wouldn't need a prescription at all. <laughs> I don't know if you can get a non-prescription monocle. You tell me, eight, twelve, fifteen. If there's any um, okay. monoculists. Oh wow, they're all coming in thinking past those responses. <laughs> be optician. If I went into an optician and said I'm looking for a monocle, would they not want it? Or say, oh no, we don't really do those anymore. Half price. Yeah, mm -hmm. I bet it wouldn't be. I bet I'll it would it be wouldn't. at least the. You got to pay for the um, the the string. <laughs> Start this off. sounds very attractive. You were going to say on the a string, goes into it. not even on a nice leather on a string. But isn't that weird? It's for me. It's been the sunglasses hot for two since me and you went. I hadn't heard of it before. <laughs> Making out like we had some romantic mini break. <laughs> well, you took me I very much in a take me to your leader. Like it was very <laughs> Mark and Mindy, the whole thing. Because mm -hmm. she said, "Oh, that, that was really nice." They were all like 125 quid, and I just laughed. I, yeah. Obviously, they're not that. He much. didn't. He didn't even think to ask the prices. I he honestly didn't know. thought Is they'd it, be like in their 20 quid. He thought it would be like 12 pounds. We have to bear in mind that he had just worked his way through 17 free pairs. I know yeah. so, exactly, you know, and that. Imagine Emma sitting, <laughs> sitting on losing yeah. and, and, and stuff. The text to get through that many pairs. Oh. Um, have you still got those sunglasses? The sunglass <laughs> hot ones? Yeah. <laughs> I have them in, in my pocket here. They are Do now. you use them regularly? Only when it's sunny. 
Okay. Good rule. Even though I am <laughs> not partially <rock> famous, <laughs> I, I, never, I never wear them for that for that kind of thing. <laughs> The worst kind of thing, I think, I know some people need these, but people that don't need those reactor light repeat glasses mm. and wear them, <laughs> I, 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 those, I don't like that. That's a terrible look. That is the worst look, people in slightly shaded glasses. Reading glasses, yeah. You're in Clinton cards yeah. and there's someone in slightly shaded, those slightly shaded. Now, if they've got, um, I don't know, something yeah. in there, you know, they've got um, contractivitis. Yeah. Or something that? like that. So from, I think my manager at it. <laughs> um, but um, if they've got that, fine. So don't, don't text in, oh, my, no, I've got um, a, a, a manula in my retina. Don't text that. I mean, okay, I'm sorry, I but know. shut up about it. I'm not talking about you. I'm talking about people who think, oh, it just look a bit cooler if I wear these. And mm. then they, and it doesn't. But if you're thinking that at home, start get some clear ones. Because I always associate it with uh, <laughs> people who get involved in um, yeah okay shape. okay yeah bad stuff. yeah we know okay. we know what yeah. we think it is okay okay <laughs> absolute 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 radio Frank Skinner on Absolute Radio you were talking about the double barreled name earlier I was on about if you married someone with the same surname yeah with the same surname so it's you, not would, double barreled could you well it would be double barreled but if I married someone called Skinner yeah would she change the name to um, Louise Skinner Skinner? Mm. <laughs> and it would just seems a bit wrong. Mm. Pointless. Especially even. as you've got a partner. Well, yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's wrong on several not, levels. Yeah. George yeah. Bland has been in touch. Um, don't be so hard on yourself. Yeah. Hi, Frank. <laughs> what about former Man United footballer Eric Jemba Jemba? Yeah, was he hyphenated, Eric Jemba Jemba? I believe so. But are you, are you suggesting that old Ma Jemba <laughs> married <laughs> a bloke called Jemba and thought, well, I'm not giving up my family name? Good for her. So, I really uh, hope so. so Respect headstrong women through history, don't we? Yeah. But what is going to happen in, say, 10 years' time when all... Because when I was a kid, the only hyphenated names was Sir Geoffrey Ponsonby Smythe. They were all with those people. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But now, because a lot of people... Um, don't marry the kids have got the double barreled surname yeah yeah. what happens when they marry kids with other double barreled surnames oh yeah well it's just going to be ridiculous oh, I mean gonna you're going to have a driving licence as long as your arm just with your name on your yeah. arm. but what will happen to that because uh, you're going to upset anyone if you drop one of those mm. and where, will there be a hyphen in the middle of the two hyphenated <laughs> names they're just going to have... 12, 15. Anyone from uh, the registry office <laughs> yeah. listening? I remember when we registered our child, the woman said to me, uh, uh, well, at least yeah, it's nice and easy to spell, this one, Boz. And I said, yeah, well, I, you know, I would have looked it up. She said, people don't. People coming in and say, I want to call, him, call her Melanie, M-A-L-N-Y. And I'm never sure whether they just can't spell or whether they, they've got a, a wacky thing. She said, but we're not allowed to say, actually, it's normally spelt, blah, blah. Really? She said, so, but the, so now there's just a lot of terribly misspelt names. She said, I think a lot of them are completely accidental. People think that's oh. how you spell it. Really? And I said, Broken Britain. She said, you said a mouthful. And then we signed and left. <laughs> <laughs> What happened to that woman, I wonder, with her, with her opinions? If and, she's listening, tell us. Yeah. Eight, 12, mm. If she's listening, if that registered. It'd be nice to hear from her. We've had yeah. some um, texts in regarding monocles. Oh, good. Rob West from Yorkshire says, I bet Jacob Rees-Mogg wears a sunglass monocle. I, I hope that that is uh, correct. I think he might get the nanny to walk in front of him with the parasol. Yeah. Just to get it yeah. out of his eyes. That's, <laughs> What a, it's a good question, though. How does um, Jacob Rees Mogg keep the sun out of his eyes? Because I, I can't see him in a sta- straightforward pair of shades. No. I can't see him in a sunglass hat. No. No, he would, and he, he wouldn't wear. Hat. You know those sort of sun shades that the um, one always imagines the dogs wear in the uh, <laughs> dogs play pool? Um, <laughs> what the pop, Popular picture. I don't think any of them actually do, but I always think of yeah. the dogs wearing visors. That's a good you know. question. I think the incredibly posh tend to eschew the sunglasses. I thought your question was going to be, what are the dogs wearing <laughs> in the pool playing picture? What are they wearing? Text I know there's one leaning over the table who's just wearing a waistcoat, if I remember right. I always think, oh, you don't want that against the table. <laughs> 
If you're gonna wear, if you're gonna actually play, put some trousers on. Good point. I mean, come on. I might recreate that picture with one of, with my dog um, oh, that'd Raymond. That'd be good. Yeah. You need. Well, you, you can't have one dog. You need, you need no, some I know, other. but I'll get Catherine Ryan. She's got shih tzu. I'll get a whole load of them. Get my friends' dogs. Yeah, you could. Uh, I mean, if you're gonna have dogs that size, you're gonna have to get a smaller table. <laughs> I'm, I'm suggesting bar billiards. <laughs> I had a dog you could play bar billiards with. Um, Without needing any barbillions, <laughs> if you receive my meaning. He's old then, though. Oh. Frank, we've got a Specsavers. Quickly, listen. Okay. If you go into Specsavers to buy a monocle, because they always have offers of buy one, get one free, well, they give you a pair of glasses. Oh, but I don't Do want see? a pair of glasses. I want <laughs> I want two monocles. A spectacle. Yeah. yeah, I want a monocle that just stays in my top pocket like a reserve parachute. Okay. So if I lose that, I mean, I don't know why the monocle has died out. There's a lot of people that must just be a bad sight in one eye. Yeah. Why? Mm. Why, why is the monocle? There's basically um, Chris Eubank mm-hmm. and um, is it Mr. Planter? That peanut that wears one. Oh yeah. Yes, I, yeah. I love his work. I think that's it for the for the monocle. I might because um, my my right eye is, is is all right. It's the left one that's a bit rubbish. But I might go monocle. Do it. Yeah. It's a bit villainous. It's I, I always sit there. So's Frank. I'm not <laughs> <laughs> Skinner, Dean and Cochrane. Together, the Frank Skinner Show. Absolute radio. I bought some uh, some walking boots this week. Oh yeah. It's, which is a big thing to buy walking boots because it's not yeah. I mean buying shoes buying shoes is a risk yeah mm. but walking boots you're going to go off and do maybe a 17 mile day or something like that mm-hmm. you've got to get it right how do you do that? Mm. because you, I don't walk around the shop is yeah, not but enough exactly. is it? well it's it was enough. when you were going off to get them last week it was a bit Captain Oates <laughs> it was yeah I always, there was something very poignant about it. Well, it's, it, it's they're going to be your friends for two or three yeah. years, and if you get it wrong, remember the first time I went, I went in a pair of sort of um, post punk red things I'd bought in Camden Market. <laughs> I thought these would be all right, <laughs> and the bliss, the pain. Oh my God, day one. I don't oh. know if I told you this, but. Um, <laughs> I had massive blisters on my feet and a guy said, well, in the army what we'd do is we'd, we'd burst them with needles but we'd leave the cotton on. You know, on the, the cotton needle. on the end of the... He said, then you, what you do is you drag the oh, cotton through right. the blister it all the and it soaks, it soaks up the moisture from the... So Did I, you do that? So I lay in a, this bed seat on the... And, and That's Kath, a lovely story. And I Kath, like it. And Kath had this needle with the cotton on and she went through the... And she um, she was about halfway through, and she knelt down at the side. Mm. And um, uh. I thought, I said, why, why are you kneeling? And she said, I've sort of semi-fainted. <laughs> 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 it's so horrible. It's made me go a bit lightheaded and dizzy. <laughs> so I don't want to go through all that again. No, so, nor do we. So I went to... Uh, <laughs> so I, what happens is you, you try them on... They measured me like, you know, a proper... Remember the clocks with oh, fitting the of right. yeah. Yeah. I do. They, um, which Boz... When I take Boz for shoes, he gets that done. But I don't, yeah. they don't seem to do it to adults. No, They do so for much. a walking boot. No, I don't think they have that at Jimmy Choo. No, no I wonder I've why. Yeah. But you'd Choo. think at those kind of places yeah. exactly where they would have exactly. it. Exactly. But they'd yeah. probably realise that no human foot <laughs> would actually fit into one of those shoes if you were stick yes. to the paperwork in front of the people. <laughs> Absolute... Absolute, Absolute Radio. Frank Skinner on Absolute Radio. I did once run on a treadmill to get um, oh, I running did that shoes. Oh, sorry, I thought that was just an anecdote. All right. Right. <laughs> <laughs> no, they, there are some running shops where you can run on yeah, a treadmill I've, I've to see that. if you, is it over or whatever. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, and then they give you the right shoes to counterbalance what you're... Yeah, because they said to me, you know, you are. lean a bit on that right ankle and yeah. all that stuff. I mean, mm. maybe it was true. Yeah. Um, okay. But there's one where there's an alley at the side of the shop and this bloke said, go and run up and down <laughs> that alley, I'll really? watch you. Yeah. That's good, isn't it? 
that's nice. I thought Did he say, good. mind your car? <laughs> <laughs> so I'm there, like, I've got a suit on and trainers. <laughs> <laughs> Run past two blokes, um, you know, in black Crocs and uh, check trousers smoking by a oh, beer yeah, yeah. <laughs> from the local restaurant. <laughs> um, anyway, so... Um, so you what, had what the measure, you do, measurer. There's a, pseudo, there's a pseudo mound. Oh, really? Um, they have a pseudo mound in the middle of the shop mm-hmm. with um, simulated rough terrain on it. Really? Yeah. Do you walk up and down there? Yeah, it's like a small hill in the shop. That's that they good. Have. And they Did have, you feel a bit silly, Billy? I felt... Um, <laughs> I'll tell you what, they've got on the on the wall like a big picture of a mountain. I think the idea is that you you, got, you sort of... It, because you're walking up a pseudo mound with rough, you know, simulated rough terrain, and the mountain picture is going to give you a real feeling of the, of the whole they experience. They should give you nice. uh, headphones for a snowstorm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, really atmospheric. But um, I, I didn't need them. OK. Fake views. <laughs> That's what I did. <laughs> But I did that. I mean, even though they had the, they had the mound, I um, I probably did it, you know, two two to three minutes. I maybe yeah. wore those boots for mm. the whole thing, and that's good. That's a good run. They gave me some walking socks. To Great. Run. I actually, um, <laughs> I would. <laughs> no, I'll, I'll tell you after um, after this because the the, the fez is on the table and okay. You see that thing in my voice then when I went the fez. Yeah. yeah. That's happened in. T- does your voice re-break as you get older? Oh. oh, I see. I've had a few of those just lately. What do you think? Oh, it goes a bit sort of Mavis from so Coronation does. Street. Yeah. Not really, no. <laughs> <laughs> I have started noticing that um, increasing in my. Well, could be the end of my radio career. In becomes. two years, it'd be like working with Joe Pasquale. Yeah. It? <laughs> well, yeah, tiny Tim. <laughs> Google him. Um, so yeah, so I ended up buying um, 125 quid's worth of walking Whoa! boots, and no, they were amongst the cheapest in the shop. Yeah, I thought really? so. Um, yeah. Um, for uh, and that I've worn for two or three minutes, and then mm. I'd go and what, wear them for seventeen miles. I mean, what chance have you got? It's like marriage. <laughs> it is very you much know, like marriage. You, you know someone for eighteen months, and you think, oh yeah, I'll, I'll take it. Yeah. And then you're going to have a whole life, and imagining that the blisters aren't going to come later on. Well, <laughs> wake up and smell the um, what do they smell? Coffee. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're unmarried, aren't you? I am. I, I am unmarried at the moment, but who can say? <laughs> Frank. Frank Skinner. On Absolute Radio. Absolute Radio. Frank, famous monocle wearers. Mm hmm. This is from 307. Also include Lord Charles. Oh, of course. And Sir Patrick Moore and many of the Prussian military. Lord Charles, in case you don't know, was a... Uh, I, like, I don't think we've uh, ref the Prussian military on here before. Oh, no. we will be soon. <laughs> um, um, print, I don't get that, but it, it sounds ominous. Yeah. Prince, uh, not so Prince Charles, Lord Charles. a reference Charles. to the Russian military. <laughs> oh, I was going to miss here. Yeah. Um, they're not Prussian, though, are they? No, oh, I was pretending to miss here. Oh, oh, sorry. You know, um, it's only one letter. Oh, sorry, I've, I've, I've unpicked the whole Doesn't have to facade. Scan, I thought. <laughs> but print, um, Lord Charles was a uh, ventriloquist poppy, in case you don't know, who was like an aristocratic figure. Who operated him? Ray Allen. OK. I've worked with him. Of course okay. you have. Sure. And uh, he, How, he, he, was he, was, he had a slightly breaking... Well, this was the voice <laughs> of Lord Charles. I remember he was on with a female... Um, uh, assistant on the show and he said well you're a pretty little thing aren't you so had he lived he um, sounds very emancipated yeah, yeah I was just saying he, <laughs> could, could, could eventually Chris Dobby have been involved in the whole sort of oh. current scandal <laughs> good question Did could he, Ray Allen have said you know well, like this is it'd, a be, it'd be a bit like, <laughs> be like that Anthony Hopkins film Magic well yeah. done well done oh Frank yeah. I remember him. He had a very red lips, the uh, Lord Charles, didn't he? <laughs> did he, he did. Have, he did a very <laughs> fine joke once on um, <laughs> on Celebrity Squares. And was, he also, was he one of the squares? He was, yeah, I think he might have I'd been be in so the press. I think he might have been the prestigious cent, centre square one week. Oh, even. Do you think he Could was shoot. on the same as everyone else? <laughs> well, he was on with Ray Allen. He wasn't on his own. Oh, okay, okay. And. Um, <laughs> 
<laughs> he said, um, Bob Monkos, who hosted it, said, what is a rum barber? Do you know a rum barber? It's a sort of a... Dessert. Yeah. He said, what is a rum barber? And Lord Charles said, fellow who cut your hair by the looks of it. <laughs> <laughs> and um, what was brilliant is because only a, a, a character like that could use the word rum as, a, yeah, as an adjective. Yeah. So I thought it was, it was a great, it was a brilliant moment. Yeah. It's added, it's added sir. It's had its moment, Celebrity Square. Oh, yeah. They used to, in, when, when the American, I'm, I'm going to stop talking in a minute, but the American <laughs> Celebrity Squares, which is called Hollywood Square, Squares, used to have a man in the middle who was gay in the day when no one could say there was gay. <laughs> so everyone knew he was gay, but you couldn't say gay because people would uh, stop watching or whatever mm. they do, writing letters. And he would sit in the middle being in, you know, like the gayest bloke on television, but no one would ever, ever mention. It's like in the 50s. And somebody said, the question was, do chimpanzees kiss and he said yes very well (laughs) (laughs) absolute 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 radio Frank Skinner on absolute radio this is uh, Frank Skinner on Absolute Radio with Emily Dean and Alan Cochran. You can text the show on 8.12.15, follow the show on Twitter at Frank on the radio or email the show via the Absolute Radio website. Some very sad news in, Frank. Apparently, oh, um, no. former Man United footballer... I thought Arge had gone missing again. <laughs> no, no, it's worse. No, apparently. he did split up with um, the GC recently. Oh, did yeah, date? he was dating the GC. I didn't know that. Yeah. How long did that go on for? Daisy? A few years. A few <laughs> years? Yeah. You're joking. <laughs> um, I don't think anything that those people did went on a few years. But anyway. Uh, so yeah, apparently, some sad news. Eric Jemba Jemba, he's now bankrupt, oh, unfortunately. What? So, um, Playing for Man United and now he's bankrupt. I know. I'm really sorry to hear that. I'm well, sorry, sorry not only plan. for him, but for his um, debtors. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. He's probably glad that we've moved past the point as a society where we had debtors jail, hasn't he? Yeah, I yeah. should think so. I should imagine. Is he still in uh, Manchester, Eric? Don't, don't know if he is. Double no. D, as we not, used to call him. Did they? Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> um... 240 has texted... Double Jemba. <laughs> 240 has texted, Celebrity Squares in the 50s would have just been all the uncool people. Um, oh, Squares. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. Okay. I was prepared to wait. I was just going to wait. I wasn't. <laughs> squares now are the cool people, aren't yeah. they? Mm. Oh, you know, you wear glasses now. When I was at school, if anyone wore glasses, that they were written off as an individual. The world has now gone Now people mad. are wearing them and don't even need them. Tank tops? Uh, yeah. All the cool ones now? We were discussing monocles earlier. Nine zero zero has texted, what about split glasses on string that come together with a magnet? What about oh, those? Oh, yeah, I tell you who wears those. Um, Michael no, Grade. What? I'll tell you who doesn't really? wear those. People with nose piercings, because <laughs> oh, that yeah. magnet would be. What surely it would do? It would draw the. Uh, you'd rip your nose it, ring that out. would be on the bridge of your nose, and it would very slowly, because it wouldn't be a terribly powerful magnet, or it'd take your fillings out. <laughs> All your fillings would be on the roof of your mouth, like, yeah, you like bats that. in a in a cave. <laughs> um, but what? Yeah, maybe you wouldn't be. Able, if you had fillings in your lower teeth, you would put oh. on one of those uh, glasses, Just, mate. You would be able to open your mouth. A severe I mean, underbite. Imagine if you were going to a lovely black tie event, had your hair and makeup done, and then that happened. With and the then you could open your mouth because you had a <laughs> magnet in the bridge of your nose glasses, and also your nose piercing would be steadily, desperately making its way up one cavity, trying to reach the yeah. the source, of the attraction. I'll tell you what, it's made me rethink my potential <laughs> nose piercing and my potential glasses held yeah. together in the Out middle of with the magnet. Out of the three of us, who is most likely to get the nose piercing? Me. Yeah, I would agree with yeah, that, I, would I you? think so. Yeah. Who's, who's the most likely to have metal fillings? <laughs> <laughs> um, can I say I'm the least likely? Yes. Okay, yeah. thank you. I've got quite a lot of silver in me. I've got some oh, metal silver. Fillings. What is it? What, what, what are worth fillings? That's a funny out? way of saying you're rich. 8, eight 12, 15. <laughs> Zinc, was it? Oh, you can't... Is it zinc or that? No, no, no I'm, I'm thinking of something else. I think it's a mixture, isn't it? No, it begins with M, doesn't it? M? Yeah. That's what it'll be. M. Mika. 
<laughs> no. <laughs> remember there was Grace a Mika, Kelly. There was a Mika quarry in an early episode. I'm going to remember early what it Batman is. Batman comic. Are you going really Route One? Is it metal? Is no. that what you're doing? I'm get, Mercury. Get, yes. Oh. You see, we work together Don't as a team. Is. Mercury's poisonous, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Anyway, I've got quite a lot of that. Um, I, d- I'm, I remember there used to be still amalgam. Um, I say. Um, amalgam. Amalgam. <laughs> Um, we're getting a lot of texts in about debtors prisons for oh, some are reason we? Well, yeah. imagine we get quite a few in from debtors prisons <laughs> well we've had a correction oh. yeah. from um, someone mullet I think you should be more worried about Jemba Jemba's creditors than debtors oh. debtors you know owe what? you creditors are owed by you I'm just what? saying Thank hashtag no. hashtag go on correction correction yeah, I must admit, when I said it, I, mm. I, I there was doubt in my mind. Yeah. But you know, without doubt, what are we? Yeah. Um, Fundamentalists. Someone said magnesium. Oh, magnesium. I think that's isn't that a trace element in bananas that's good for us? And didn't yeah. it? Does, you can milk it, can't you? And use it for stomach problems. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, oh, it's all got Whatever very happened to public. stomach problems? Yeah. Sort of upset tummies and things, stomach ache. No one gets that what, anymore. I what people don't get. They don't get earache anymore, do they? Yeah. I think we've had that before. Okay. Um, why are we still talking? <laughs> Daisy's looking absolute daggers at me. Mm. You're listening to the Frank Skinner podcast from Absolute Radio. Want your Frank fix a little sooner? Listen live every Saturday from 8am on Absolute Radio. Across the UK on digital radio, mobile apps and in London and the South East on 105.8 FM. Absolute Radio. I want to talk to you about a potential rebrand, guys, that I'm not H-A-P-P-Y about. No. So where um, are we working now? Some start-up I've in gone, I've Old gone Street? Very, I've gone very partridge there. Uh, <laughs> Heinz have apparently been kicking around the idea of, uh, of changing... That, this is, uh, what on <laughs> earth is going noise? on? This is a bottle of... Uh, this, is, this is a verbal clue. It's not verbal. Audio clue. Jacob Marley. Radio clue. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, Heinz are kicking around the idea. Is that a tub of salad cream that you've got? It there? is. They're talking oh. about changing the name to sandwich cream. Yes. I mean, is it isn't. Isn't butter sandwich cream? <laughs> yeah, it sounds like bad margarine if they call it sandwich cream, doesn't it? It sounds to me like a byproduct. Oh. It's the sort of thing, you know when you used to get um, supply teachers in and when they taught, you'd get that white stuff in the corner yeah. of their mouth. That, that's like saying, uh, he, got a bit of, he got a bit of sandwich cream. <laughs> sort of salivation. Sometimes you get like a strand between the, t- the centre, the, the top lip and the bottom. I can't bear it when people get that. Have some no. self-respect. Yeah. That's yeah, not exactly. good. But people don't know, you see, that's the problem. I know. Well, I tell them. Um, yeah, so it's Heinz. Yeah. Um... I like to call them. It's Heinz Craft, actually, isn't it? Oh, now, I believe. They got bored, Heinz, didn't Heinz Craft. <laughs> well, I've got. I've actually. They've sent Most me. Most German. Um, coincidentally, mm. I, I've I've been sent a bottle of salad cream by Heinz. Well, this is I don't think it mentioned. Oh, you think they're trying to? Maybe they're on a big thing. That's why the whole thing has happened. I don't know. And but they're saying I think they're by appointment to Her Majesty the Queen, according to this. Yeah. She gets involved in all sorts. Yeah, I don't know if she keeps lending a name to all these private companies. So the the thinking behind it is that millennials don't sort of relate to salad cream as something they would put on salad. Can you remind me again what age range we're talking about with millennials? From 1980... Oh, Daisy says 1981... Um, well, wow, for goodness' <laughs> sake! From 19- I thought it was people born since the millennium. That would make sense. <laughs> yeah, that's what I thought. But yeah, from nineteen eighty one. Okay. So, and then it's Gen Z from about nineteen ninety oh, something. Yeah. So I there you go. I still don't know why they need it changed if they're not using it on salad. Because I mean, 
hardly anybody is putting salad cream on salad, but it doesn't matter, does it? You're still eating it. I don't know. Although see, apparently I mean, we're eating it less. I'll be straight with you. I had sort of got into my mind that there had already been a rebranding and that salad cream was now called mayonnaise. That's what I thought had happened. Oh, no. Oh, Frank. It's a, it's oh, Frank. So I didn't mean to sound quite so impatient. I was such Sit a trivial yourself matter. yourself down, because salad cream is a far superior product is to mayonnaise. Is it really? Yeah, absolutely, 100%. Well, I'm going to try it when I get it. It just so happens I have a bottle in my hand. Oh, yeah. A German <laughs> Chancellor this morning. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I spoke this morning <laughs> with the I CEO hope. of... Um, Heinz Kraft. Heinz Kraft. Heinz Kraft. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, no, I did what... Um, I, I used to get... We had a, a footballer played for West Brom called Joey Mayo. All right. And uh, I always, um, because he's from the past, I always think of mayo as an old-fashioned thing. I don't know if it is, really. Mm. I think it was all salad cream when I was a kid. Joey Mayo, the only chant I ever remember that was genuinely negative about the own your own player, and he, his chant, his regular chant was, Oh, no, oh, no, Joey Mayo. <laughs> <laughs> That's tough, isn't it? It's not that friendly, is it? <laughs> That's tough. But of course, now I'm surprised he hasn't been found up for sponsorship oh, um, yeah. in the, with the Mayo industry. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, not massively surprised, but a little bit surprised. <laughs> yeah, what a strange ambassador. He was, um, you know, Joey Mayo, former <laughs> West Brom player. It's probably about, oh, he's probably my age. Just trying to imagine how that would go down. The person who mentioned that in the um, in the meeting <laughs> yeah, in Old what about, Street. I was thinking about maybe getting Joey Mayo in for a couple of uh, personal appearances. <laughs> what does everyone think? Yeah. There must have been other famous Mayo. Imagine the bearded creators with their Simon? flat wives. Simon what? Mayo. Simon Mayo, of course. Oh, come on he now. was the man to call. <clears throat> yeah. Unfortunately, he's changed his name to <laughs> Simon Sandwich Cream. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think that was a mistake, but you know, you can't tell these people. Frank. Frank Skinner. On Absolute Radio. Absolute Radio. What do you think about salad cream, Emily? <laughs> um, <laughs> Frank asked me because I've got a mouthful of crisps, which is why it's sounding like that. Yes. I know, I'm so People sorry. People from the fashion industry eat crisps. Yep. Yeah. You heard it True. here first. Yeah. Particularly when they've left that industry. <laughs> yeah. There's no stopping me yeah. now. It's, it's like um, when those footballers, like Larry Lloyd, who played for Liverpool. Next time I saw him on telly, I thought he was looking over the back of a sofa. <laughs> it was his, it was, he'd got big. I have gone a bit razor ruddock. You haven't. Mm, no, you I haven't. haven't. I like Au contraire. Crisps Thank are you. nice. That's yeah. the oh, point. There used to be a thing when I was, um, I was a youth called sandwich spread, it was called. Which is really treading on the toes of butter, just need to call it that. Yeah. And it was, it was, I think it was salad cream, but with like little bits of vegetable in it. I remember so you that. had the entire sandwich filling in one. Um, was it like yeah. primula? Mm, that's more what, of a that cheese was a cheesy spread, spread isn't it? with ham bits in it. Now this was. Um, Salad cream with bits of food in it. Yeah. Like the sort it's of sort of like someone had vomited, basically. You know when you're looking for loose change down the back <laughs> of your sofa and you pull your hands up and there's those bits and you don't really know what they are. It's it was like that mm. in the salad oh, okay. cream, but it was nice. I remember it being nice. Well, I like salad cream. I'm a I'm a big fan of it. You I, made that clear. I sometimes <laughs> and You've this, become a massive fan since you saw my me get a free one this, this morning. No, no, this is this is <laughs> controversial. It says salad cream on it, but I sometimes put salad cream on fish and chips. I eschew tomato sauce. What you talk fish. about, Willis? <laughs> and. I mean, I'm glad that this has had a response that's quite positive in this room because sometimes I've told people that and they've acted like I've I've been like an ogre, like oh my god, you do what? Well, if I was going to be, I don't. I, I, I was that directed a, at me? No, imagine if I put it on a hot dog or something, people would be outraged. S R B. Well, <laughs> that used to be a right. S R B. Da 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 da. S R B. A sausage in a roll in a box for me. <laughs> it, was a, it was a cinema. Ad, but... Sounding a bit toppy. Can we do that again? Okay. <laughs> one, two. Th- I'm going to go bass. Okay. okay I'll, I'll one, go right. two, three, four. S R B. S R B. A sausage in a roll in a box for me. 
Here you go. Oh, a bit you of go. harmony. I took a bit of harmony. Yeah. Can't yeah. believe I missed rehearsals for this week's show. It's so frustrating sometimes. Um, yes, I like the idea of a sausage in a roll. <laughs> they hadn't thought there might be a name for that. And why did they need to make it all cutesy and add for me? But it was a hot end. dog. It was a yeah. hot dog. It wasn't even in a box, was it? it wasn't it more of a. It didn't have a top on it, did it? Well, if it was a box, it, was it wasn't raft. very sturdy. It was a raft. Yeah. yeah. It was a hot dog in a raft. It's a George raft. Google hot, it. Hot dog in a raft. I know. <laughs> I, that's what their song should have been. Can I be honest? Do I um, was that Simon Cowell's autobiography? <laughs> I'm sure it was. Is he called that? <laughs> yeah, something like that. Okay. Uh, I didn't try salad cream up until a few years ago. Love it. Not really. Um, Put it on a load I mean, of tin tuna for a sandwich? We never had it. I think you've just been crossed off a list at... Uh, well, I know. At Kraft. Heinz. Well, Kraft Heinz, Heinz Kraft. Heinz Kraft. Okay. Um, I think it was just something that I saw it as a little bit I- watching ITV back oh, in the day. Yeah. Did yeah, you see? Well, yeah. Yeah, I think it's one Come of them. On. I remember <laughs> I when, I first, when I first came to London in 91, I remember being roundly mocked for liking beetroot and it was seen as a sort of working class thing Mm. and within four or five years the sour sort of delis started having beetroot in and the last laugh was on me good for you yeah same thing happened with hound's tooth check but I haven't got here time to talk about the way I've led so many trends (laughs) over the years in many ways I'm the Anna Wintour of the Anna Wintour of the um, the low life world. I thought it occurred to me, Frank. I thought it occurred to me, like you know, if we get rid of salad cream, what next? Before we know it, we'll be saying goodbye to tartar sauce. Yeah, if we try. That to- is oh, a come on, oh, come on. Oh my, I wish what, I forgot a jingle. Yeah. Let's celebrate it. A jingle. Oh, I've got a jingle that was made made for this moment. Um, just keep talking. Okay. <laughs> I've got a jingle. Just remember that. Um, okay, I'm remembering. Sauce. Tartar sauce, you're remembering. And, and it's, a per- it's absolutely perfect, <laughs> I think. Is Daisy, it a special Daisy one? might have took it off. Is thing. it a Jose Mourinho oh, special oh, one? Oh, and yeah, now I just... It's gone. Oh, no. <laughs> Here we go. Here we go. Oh, sorry, Jerry. I thought you were coming in again there. <laughs> Which I think is a quote from the Battle of Britain. <laughs> <laughs> Absolute, absolute, absolute radio. Frank Skinner on Absolute Radio. Al from Aberte- Aber- Aberdeen. Aberdeen. I'm with Alan. This is how we find out. <laughs> I put salad cream on my fish and chips too. Long live salad cream. Long live. Long live is great. I, um, I don't even put um, tomato ketchup on fish and chips. Do you put anything on it? I put salt and vinegar on it. Oh, yeah, is, good shout. I think that is what you're supposed to put on it. Maybe and a I know I'm wow. I don't okay. want to suggest I'm some narrow-minded conformist, but I, it doesn't need anything else. Oh. It's marvellous. When I was a, a, a child, this would be our Sunday tea, right? So we'd have Sunday tea at about 4.30, and it would always be exactly the same. Is this dinner, by the way? Supper? Uh, yeah, okay. well, yeah. yeah. Mm. Uh, well, we used to have a bit more, a bit more... It's cooked hot food tea. Well, oh. it would be often, but on a Sunday, mm. we would have tin salad. What? Which was like chopped carrot and peas and stuff in salad cream in a tin. So we'd have that. And then we'd have... Um, Tin salmon, often with that, which people still eat. Mm. Kath, Kath and my partner has about six tins of uh, tin salmon a week. Really? Does she? There's probably something bad in it. No. I'm like living with a tabby. It is. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it, it is a bit. Sometimes you know, I go in a circle, doesn't she? Some, sometimes I go to kiss her, and it, it, you know, it, I mean, as much yeah, as I love her, it's very, very fishy. Yeah, but she's got good skin. It's good for the skin. This is it good for the yes, skin? Yes, that's yeah. why. Yeah. But anyway, so we'd have that, and then we would have tinned fruit salad with um, tinned carnation cream, <laughs> which we'd pour over it. Oh, that was very sweet, wasn't it? Lovely. Yeah. yeah. So tin salad. Tin salmon, tin fruit salad, and tin cream. That would be our. So this is when I was um, I was uh, living with uh, 
Robert Scott <laughs> at, the, at the Antarctic. <laughs> <laughs> um, and it was cold nights. Um, but yeah, and that, that, tin, I, that, I, that tin salad, I think that might have gone there. Yeah, I don't know about that. I know about all oh, the rest. So that's of not salad, peas and carrots. There was all the little chop, tiny chopped like beans that have been that have been cut with scissors. So there's no, there was no iceberg in there or gem. Well, we had. What are those beans called? And they're quite fat. Runner. No, they're not the thin ones. They're kind of like spongy pods. Oh. Big fat beans. You know the ones I mean. Broad beans. Might be broad yeah, beans. Yeah, broad. We had a bowl. Stuart, of, Stuart's, we call them. <laughs> we had a, yeah. we had a bowl of um, I call them Chris's. Yeah, oh, lovely. <laughs> Chris's dad, you mm. see, and I'm older. Was the joke. <laughs> so, um, so I don't know. I'm sure it is broad beans. They're quite fat, spongy, okay. and we had a bowl of those. And the babysitter come in and said, "That is the biggest edamame I've ever seen in my life." And you think the world has just <laughs> changed? Yeah. It's changed. <laughs> You're listening to the Frank Skinner podcast from Absolute Radio. Want your Frank fix a little sooner? Listen live every Saturday from 8 a.m. on Absolute Radio. Across the UK on digital radio, mobile apps, and in London and the South East on 105.8 FM. Absolute Radio. I had a dream last night that George Orwell was still alive. Why oh. did that happen? <laughs> That's not what happened to why Martin Luther that, King. Why would that have been in my mind? Maybe it's I was just at a we're... party and somebody said, I said, who's that guy? And they said, it's George Orwell. <laughs> I said, Maybe he's I dead, isn't he dead? And they said, no, what, George Orwell? No, he just doesn't write stuff anymore. <laughs> Even your dreams are impressive. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's wonderfully intellectual, isn't it? You dream of George Orwell. Oh, yeah. I can't even remember his party in my dreams. or anything. Yeah. Um, at a buffet, I mistook salad cream for the cream for a chocolate cake. It was salad cream, and I can't ever eat it again. That's from Daniel Doyle from Sydenham. Is it Sydenham? Mm. Yeah. Is that you say? Yeah. Sydney. Yeah, you so, said how, how you the grey <laughs> Um, you're looking um, DJ sceptical. No, I'm not. Okay. Um, I'm not DJ sceptical. No, I'm just saying that would put you off, though, wouldn't it? <clears throat> yeah. I'll tell you a food I do think needs rebranded. Not um, not salad cream, but offal. Because I don't <laughs> oh, think the yeah. British are very good at eating offal, and I think it's because it sounds like <laughs> it's awful. It does sound a bit like awful. I mean, there's a nominative determinism it? to it. Yeah. Sweet meats, which is what <laughs> they used to call it. They, they do meat. get that. That's <laughs> yeah. so what they used to call it, and... Um, Tubular you know, balls. People, <laughs> people would, people so would munch that. away happily, wouldn't they? <laughs> yes, I went there. Yeah. Um, I heard that they're going to they're gonna, one, they're gonna rebrand uh, the Antarctic to okay. the uh, the deck Arctic. Oh. So they're worried about uh, <laughs> It may uh, be some time. Yeah, they're worried about the image and, yeah. and all that stuff. <laughs> well, they're so, these sponsors, they are so disloyal. Yeah. Mm. Tell you what doesn't need rebranded. Oh. Superfoods. Superfoods. They've That's they've good. got a, exactly what it says on the tin yeah, thing. That, I, how? I tell you what needs a rebrand. Lard. Lard is actually very good for you. It's well, better. You're all, shut up. It is. It, I, it's the I trend. Use lard. The trendoids mm. like it now. Yeah. It's lard? better for yeah. you than butter and margarine. It's got the right sort margarine. of fat. Lard. <laughs> Well, people think, think there's the a right West Indian point. church in this studio <laughs> if they walk past. <laughs> <laughs> lard! No, um, <laughs> really? I thought lard was the absolute worst thing in the world. No, lard is our saviour. Sorry, I'm not, I'm, we're, not, <laughs> we're, not, we're not slagging off Radio 2 if anybody thinks it. Aren't it's they? really good for you, but because it's lard... <laughs> yeah, the good lard, as we call it. <laughs> Yeah, it's now been rebranded. Um, yeah, and um, great if you're going out clubbing. Lard of the dance. Yeah. <laughs> Frank. Frank Skinner on Absolute Radio. Absolute Radio. And um, this is uh, Frank Skinner on Absolute Radio with Emily Dean and Alan Cochran. You can text us on eight twelve fifteen, and we love it when you do. Right, guys? Yeah. yeah. Follow the show on Twitter at Frank on the Radio or email the show via the Absolute Radio website. People have been go. sending that in... That felt... I'll tell you what that felt like. You know when uh, when someone goes to the door in a film yeah. and there's a bloke standing behind them with a gun and they say, <laughs> you coming out, Dave? 
No, I um, <laughs> I'm not coming out today. Thanks very much. Oh, I can't come in for. No, it's not convenient at the moment. And they walk away, and you think, how oh, could you not know that there was? Did you hear my voice go again? Then? <laughs> yeah. No, you're being Someone's too paranoid with about vo- the Mavis. I don't what it is. I watched a, a, a Batman and Robin animation. This oh week, yeah, that'll be it. And it was based on the <laughs> 1960s uh, Batman TV series, and they had Adam West no longer with us. Loved sadly. him as well. But he's doing the voice of Batman, and he's he's an old guy, right? So they're saying yeah. uh, um, that to the commissioner, who's, who's not the same actor, would say, "What what do you think of this Batman?" It's <laughs> 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 pretty bad. But you think, oh, sh- well, you think it's bad, and I'm starting to I feel that's maybe that's happening to me. Mm. I need to do plenty of um, visual stuff while I still can. Yeah. Okay. Well, it's, it's I mean, no, I meant audio. I meant audio stuff. Shocking revelations this yes. morning on Absolute Radio. Oh, what's going, I tell you. Frank, we've had some lovely pictures sent in by some of our readers of <clears throat> um, Heinz vegetable salad oh, in yeah. a tin. It's still available, it Your looks like. It is still yeah. available. Well, unless they've done... I mean, it looks like it is. I can see the sell-by dates on the top. It, these look current branding and packaging to me. Wow, it really feels like post-war. Mm. Mm, but I suppose there's always a war somewhere. Good point. Here's a um, here's a thought on the food front. Plowman's lunch. Oh, oh that's yeah. a good one. You speak yes. thing in the pub. Yeah, yes. I might have yes. to just have a plowman's. <laughs> yeah. It was such a thing. It was, it was part of everyday vernacular. But it was bread, cheese, and Branston, Branston pickle. 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 But that was it, wasn't it? That was it. it. Yeah. What, maybe a lettuce, one lone lettuce? No, I don't, I don't even don't, think the lettuce leaves. Not a plow, plowman wouldn't have anything to do with it. <laughs> I think it was uncluttered by vegetables. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> it, was, it was just those three elements. And so popular. Really, yeah, I remember, and you could know, so be a big, ch- bigger chunk of cheese than you'd ever eat at home, yeah. which is what you want when you're out. Yeah, absolutely. I even remember of butter excess. being a big feature. Yeah, I want just the cheese. I don't know if the what the um, Sarah. Does this ring any bells with you? Oh, she's you know about about twenty six. Oh. Yeah, she knows okay. the Plowmans. There was a film about it I've called heard. The Plowman's Lunch. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there yeah. was with Jonathan Price. And it was a, it was about you know the cynical eighties, and it said that um, it was part of a marketing campaign, the Plowman's lunch. That some um, advertising guy just came up. There was Plowman didn't eat that. No, <laughs> they didn't eat Branston pickle. No, no, a, the medieval. They, they didn't have the bread and cheese thing, Plowman. They? What do they eat then? They uh, they like a BLT. Well, uh, <laughs> they? What, Piers yeah. Plowman club, had a BLT? Club, uh, club sandwich mm-hmm. with a bit of mayo. Coronation I chicken sometimes. I don't know what sometimes. they had. They varied it. Um, they Text probably, in on 8 12, 15 what, if you know what the plowman ate. Depends what they were plowing that day. Whatever came up. Yeah. <laughs> Raw garlic. Maybe they had exactly. like a, um, <coughs> the equivalent of the Yorkie or the Marathon. Because they oh. were the truck driver, really. They, they were... Um, Frank, we've also had a framed picture in of the dogs playing pool. Oh, yeah. And and, and does one of them look like he might... Um, well, just to confirm, on the sartorial front, we have a visor. Oh, there is a visor, that's good. There's a pipe. One oh. has a cigar. You don't want that over base. And um, one has... What I like is a small cropped bolero jacket with the sleeves pushed up. Oh, onto the oh, elbows. Nice. Not to- totally sure what a bolero jacket is. This is a term. sort of. Um, if you think of uh, an ice skater, might wear one. Oh, okay. Do you see? What, a bit matador. What always frustrated me about it is I've always been told that dogs can only see in black and white. Did they? So it was a game that they'd have an have, awful time. Must have been an eternal game. Lots of dispute <laughs> and. <laughs> Confusion, feelings of terrible inadequacy. I mean, if that is a fact, they should have been playing chess. Well, yeah, exactly. Why? Why? Yeah, the but the good news is, I don't think they're that intelligent. The good news is, my dog <coughs> thinks I'm much more glamorous and better looking than I am. Oh, well, uh, yeah, and <laughs> I look like Audrey Hepburn to my dog. <laughs> Come think, on, look, check me out. There'll be some people that know. I'm, I'm right. I think the dogs only see in black and white. I think that's okay. I don't know. Yeah? We'll soon find out. <laughs> Frank. Frank Skinner. On Absolute Radio. Absolute Radio.
M- Mooligan has been in touch on the Twitters to tell us that you can get Plowman's lunch in a packet. I always keep some in my drawer at work in case of emergencies. But doesn't the bread go off? Well, it's a snack pack, so they've got crackers, which isn't a traditional Plowman's. No. However, on the front of the packet is one element that I think we forgot to mention, which is the large solitary pickled onion. Oh, was that part of the mm. ploughman? Yes, yeah, very much oh, so. Because I, I always had to ask Sans onion. I knew about that, but I just assumed that it came under the category of pickle that we'd already discussed. No, that was Branston. Yeah, you're oh, right. Okay. Right. You're right. Okay. Still so a pickle. Nice try. So Still you got Branston and a pickled onion. Yeah. Double, double pickle. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> As nobody calls it. <laughs> double pickle. <laughs> um, I like that the person fr- uh, from uh, either Kraft Heinz or Heinz Kraft. Um, said that the name, the current name, and I quote, doesn't represent its usage occasions. I love that. Wow. Yeah. <clears throat> that sounds like the sort of things Jennifer Aniston would have on a list <laughs> about Brad Pitt. <laughs> <laughs> The loose usage occasions. That's great. Yeah, also, I'm going to start other, using that. Other sources don't do that. Tomato sauce gives no indication of its usage. So if it was like yeah. steak and chips sauce, then it might. Or fish and chips yeah, sauce. Barbecue sauce, maybe. All right, yeah, you got me on that. Okay, but... Um, Burger sauce, I mean, maybe. brown sauce... Very basic. Also called daddy's. With brand <clears> name. You're right. Also called sometimes fruity. <laughs> Is That's it? true, yeah. Yeah, fruity sauce. Yeah, come on, <laughs> come on, guys. I'll tell you what has taken a uh, does exactly what it says on the tin approach to um, sauce naming hot sauce. Oh, yes. Yeah. Keep it simple, Morris. Yeah, yeah. You want before we move Too off hot, this, some of it. Um, yeah. Soy sauce. Mm. Only the other day, my son said to me, only because he had a spelling test at school and they're doing O Y this oh, week. Oh yeah. Okay. So they had boy toy and they had soy. Hmm. And he said, I don't know what that is. I said, it's, you know, it's that sauce. And I showed him a bottle of it, which I had in the cupboard. Yeah. yeah. And he said, um, oh, is it like, that's soya, is it? Is it from soya? And I thought, I don't know the answer to I this. think it is from the soya I bean, isn't it? Oh, is it? I thought it was a rice-based um, product. See, but yeah, we don't know. It feels mm. like it should be, but um, mm. I dropped me in it. Okay. I've always thought, of course, that KFC should be called Battery Hen. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Skinner, Dean and Cochrane. Together, The Frank Skinner Show. Absolute Radio. We had a... We had a chat earlier on about your new walking boots, didn't we? Yes. And we've, um, we've had an email... Uh, are hiking shoes comfortable? Dear Frank, you often see people in running shoes and tennis shoes, etc., that don't actually play the sport, but wear them because they're so comfortable. But I've never seen anyone in shoes specifically designed for walking wearing them on any other occasion. If they're so comfortable to walk in, why is this? I walk on the white cliffs each day, and the only people I ever see with problems or putting plasters on are people with hiking shoes. I did see a pair of Italian women walking the cliffs in stilettos, but that's the wonderful thing about Italian. <laughs> and they yeah. had no problem at all. <laughs> Are they actually worth it? Well, it's well, I mean, the Italian women. It's a good <laughs> I, don't, I don't question. know. Is she worth it? <laughs> <laughs> no, I think um, it's a good question. Maybe I've been conned. I've never had more pain from shoes than I've had from walking shoes. Really? Well, I was walking to school with... I, I've been trying to break them in this week. Right. I don't even know if you break in shoes anymore. Yeah, I, mean, I haven't buy, done that in a long time. You used to buy shoes and then just wear them around the house until, you know, until they stopped put, crying. Well, you had to accept that you would have sort of Captain Oates feet for, for several weeks. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'll tell you something else Was he a captain? Well. Yes, I think yeah. he was. Yeah. I'll tell you something else. He I remember when anyway. you used to buy a new car. They all perished. Yeah. 
You used, to, you, used to, you used to buy a new car and then you used to have to drive it really slowly. Running in. You used Did to have you? to run it in, yeah. Running in. Did you really? It's a thing. What, what they would tell you that at the, at the garage? That, that, it was a standard thing. when you forget, if you ever, I, I mean, I didn't really know many people who got a new car, obviously, mm. but if people who bought a new car, for the first thousand miles or something, you were supposed mm-hmm. to do like 20 mile an hour. Just take I've, it slowly, yeah. like dating. Just to get it used to the idea yeah. of being Speaking out there. Speaking as uh, the show's motoring correspondent, I've run in a new motorcycle in the past. You do the first 600 miles at under a certain amount of revs and then you can go crazy. Yeah, who'd have, really? who'd have I think that's that. urban myth. Well, there is a conspiracy theory. <laughs> it's a rubbish a, urban myth. A motorcyclist <laughs> told me that they don't really need running anymore, but what they do is they tell you to run it in because obviously it's a new machine to you. Yeah. Yeah. They don't want you just getting on it and going, hey, and going hey, crazy. Take so. her easy. Yeah, well, take I, it easy for the first 600 take miles. Her easy. And then you know the machine, Alan. Mm. Then you know the machine and what she's capable of. Well, um, I, was out, sort of I, I was out with my child and he was racing with this other kid, racing ahead um, of us. I mean, literally racing, so they'd pick mm. a, a lamppost and oh, whoever got there first. Good fun. And he shouted, My dad, my dad can't keep up because he's got walking shoes. <laughs> <laughs> As if there was some sort of obligation that came from the name. Oh, you've already given him shame, Frank. Oh, but I've given him comedy. <laughs> what better <laughs> gift could there be than that? With all us, oh no, that's about singing. But anyway, it's uh, it's it it made me laugh. <laughs> the Guardian. Frank. Frank Skinner on Absolute Radio. Absolute Radio. So, um, what else? Well, I just quickly want to say 507 has been in touch to say my walking shoes are the best, purchase them, and we're straight into the mountains. Good. Yeah. Well, I'm good, you know. With no uh, issues whatsoever. I hope you purchased half a size bigger. That's from Corinna from North Wales. Well, I was and she'll know her mountains. I had my, of course. Well, um. I had my, um, I had my width. Yeah, well, I was going to phone uh, Tina Turner about it. Hmm? River Deep. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, no, they did my width fitting, so you know I'm trusting them totally. Okay. It's one of these. I was a very experienced man dealing with me. I could tell I'd done a lot of walking, and then he was oh, called God. away and sent over a cow low youth. Oh, that's a shame. And I thought, whoa. <laughs> and he banged, he banged the the front piece down right onto the end of my toe. You know when he was measuring me. Mm. Oh, Sounds like you've got some residual anger you haven't dealt with. <laughs> no, I, you know, I, I like to see young people getting on. Okay. So that's important. I want to talk about Barack Obama I this morning. I like seeing him get off as well. <laughs> oh, goodness me. <laughs> um, Sorry, I was just reading some quotes from the paper. Sorry, carry on. <laughs> I want to talk about Barack Obama, late review. Who? Mm-hmm. Well. Forgotten. Remember his... him. Uh, security detail. Now, his security, former security advisor, called Ben Rhodes. He doesn't sound very secure, to be fair, because he's just written a book about all his clients, uh, which kiss, is a great sign of his credentials. Yeah. Anyway, it, it has isn't is quite interesting because he was talking about a visit that the Obamas made to Buckingham Palace back in 2011, I think. Smashing. And the the little detail that I enjoyed was a butler informing Barack Obama that there was a a mouse in the room. Mm. And apparently, Barack said, don't don't tell the first lady. And he said, well, we can get rid of this for you, sir, if we'd like. You know, he said, no, 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 just don't tell the first lady. And I I like the sneakiness of Barack. You say you like, I seem in a different... To me, it's got an element of, you you know what they're like. Oh, I see, (laughs) It's got a bit of that, oh, Joe Starter off. Bit 70s. Yeah, it is. I see him as a super sort of cool modern man. I'm thinking, (laughs) oh, don't tell her. Her endorsed. Imagine it. Can you imagine what we'll have to put up with? She finds out. It's got that feel to it. Yeah, yeah. Do you think he said, oh... Be another two hours waiting for her to do her makeup. <laughs> Maybe. 
I, I hope, hope, so. hope you did. Also, in a hotel, presumably, if there's a mouse in your room, you would kick off and demand a different room. But you presumably, they would have been BP. in the second best room in the palace, and the next room would no, be. No, Prince Philip gets that. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. I don't think he's in the same room as. <laughs> they her do. Sleep. I think it's known, isn't it, that they sleep? Yeah, so because when the intruder broke in. Oh, right, yeah. He yeah. spilt the beans, the, the broad beans. He did. Oh. Mm. Uh, but I like the way that the Buckingham Palace um, guy, he said, Mr. President, pardon me, there's a mouse. <laughs> Which I thought was a good, would be a good autobiography title. Should have called it that. I would uh, read that book. My dad once, so it was in the, um, in, in the, in the, uh, uh, the kitchen. We lived in the kitchen. And um, my dad suddenly, he was drying his hands on a tea towel. He suddenly leapt. Full length, like um, like a modern day goalkeeper, absolutely. Mm. And he'd seen a mouse going along the skirting board, and he leapt and caught it in the tea towel. Did he? he never. Amazing, yeah. And uh, he, he took it outside. And, like, I was waiting for him to just squeeze it like a lemon, but he took it outside and released it in the garden. But oh, it was did a fa- he? I mean, he was a, in his fifties. Fabulous piece of athleticism. He leapt like a goalkeeper. Do you think yeah. he was influenced by Peter Bonetti, the cat? Oh, <laughs> catching a mouse. Order. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> So, uh, we're at the palace. We're at the palace. Discussing the Obama's visit. When a butler told them that there was a mouse in the palace, they must have thought that they were at the start of a fairy tale or something, <laughs> mustn't they? I think I'd have said where on the off chat. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'd have said there on the stair. But yeah. No, I didn't. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a strange... I would have been... Because imagine... What surprises me is, first of all, they stay at the palace. Yeah. Because it's not in the Holiday Inn. But isn't it true that you you two have to fly on separate planes for security reasons? Because oh, yeah. they don't want them all to get wiped out at the same time if mm. the plane crashes. Oh, yeah. So you think security... How many people do the Obamas bring in those days, mm. security-wise? Yeah. Why aren't think, they in um, the bedroom getting rid of on, mice? I've got, I've got that, that mouse should have been yeah. shot down. Nine, <laughs> I've got it. Nine. But Nine, they, thanks. They stayed in a premier inn in Victoria. The, well, that's the security oh, okay. detail. No. Fair enough. I'd have been worried that that was a, a Putin esque um, listening device. <laughs> the mouse. mouse. Yeah, yeah, the robotic that, mouse. Do you remember that mouse that had a, a human ear grafting onto its yes. back? I do remember. If, that, couldn't you imagine um, the Russians using those to, uh, to listen uh, into? Absolutely. That's probably what they were made for. We're all for, oh, that poor mouse. It's probably MI5 coming up with a mobile listening device. (laughs) And also, how tempting would it have been for one of the security detail to just shoot the mouse, mouse dead? Mm. And uh, and get promoted like the third best in the security team must have thought this is my chance if I blow this mouse's head off. At I don't know. If, I think twenty five feet. feet. I, th- I think it'd have been frowned on. You think so? Yeah, I, think I think firing. So. If you're going to shoot like, guns in the palace, it's, it's like an instant be. promotion to me. But you're going to have a good reason. They didn't even shoot the Queen's intruder. <laughs> <laughs> okay, calm down, everyone. Not like the glory days. Uh, okay, I knew that, and uh, that's where I didn't want to go. Okay. Um, I like that he call. He said that he likes the Queen. Apparently, Barack. What's he going to yeah. say? Well, Firstly, no, I despise the Queen. He didn't say this publicly. He said it to his security detail behind the scenes. Okay. Okay. He oh, said yeah. she reminded him of Toots, his Toots. grandmother. Mm-hmm. Okay. Because she didn't suffer fools gladly. <laughs> Oh. And whenever people say that, it's an interesting one, that, isn't it? So I think, are you sort of saying they're a bit unpleasant? A bit of a nightmare. Yeah. It mm. is, a, is it, is it uh, a bit of a git time, is what I'm saying? Well, I think, yeah, because um, I, I love fools. <laughs> do you? Yeah, they, I, they're endless. Why do they fall in love, though? Well, that's, I don't know. When I was watching Love Island for the first time <laughs> last night, it's oh. full of... Fools. Imbeciles, even. Yeah. Is that the theme tune? Why do fools fall in love? Yeah. It is. No, it's just but why, why? Um, oh. so just a big question mark. Why? Can, Can we just establish where we stand on <laughs> fools? Well, I like. Me and David Baddiel used to have this classification of fools and idiots. Mm. And idiots were people who you really didn't like. They were unpleasant, blah, blah. But fools were like lovable 
Um, oh, okay. We had another category okay. as well, but it was basically <laughs> just me and him in it. What right. was that? No, that was it. <laughs> me and him. <laughs> um, no, we didn't. But 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 we, you know, a lot of our people we loved were fools. Oh, Whereas that's nice. idiots tend to be like the guy who I told you saw the naked bike ride and said weirdos. Yes. Those kind of narrow-minded. Yes. So no, I I, I like fools. I suffer okay. them gladly. Okay. Mm. Well, not like Toots or the Queen. No. I think the Queen must be surrounded by fools. Mm. Surely. I mean, as we speak, I can see that's the case. <laughs> <laughs> she said they had um, gold um, chargers that they ate off, Michelle. Yeah. Gold chargers? Yeah. No, they were gold plates, know. and she oh, okay. thought... No, plates, not chargers. I was thinking... <laughs> not like an iPhone <laughs> gold. Yeah. 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 a special apple shop for only the posh. <laughs> you just have an apple on it. That's what you eat. That's the dessert. <laughs> um... Yeah, that's always. A, uh, but I thought a char isn't a charge is supposed to be made out of bread. I don't know what this bit is. We'll come. We'll come. We'll, confused. We'll come back. We'll, 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 come back. we'll give you a chance because you're looking. You've gone a bit very pale. confused. Yeah. <laughs> well, I don't. Know, you've had a, you've had a linguistic uh, meltdown. We'll be all right in a minute. Frank. Frank Skinner on Absolute Radio. Absolute Radio. It must be difficult Ooh. to keep a big building like the palace free of uh, mice because it's so big and sprawling and presumably they can't have... What's going on over there? Are you I've guys got, all right? I've got... Um, you and Daisy newspaper. are up to something. You spilled something. I've got newspaper print on my fingers, which I've got all over the desk, and, and Sarah Champion is, is uh, coming soon. She and I, she won't like it. She can't deal with it. It looks stuff, like um, it, she strikes me as very tolerant and good natured. I know, but yeah, she won't like dirty fingerprints on her work surface. <laughs> it really looks like Easy, I'm, tiger. I'm at Scotland Yard. <laughs> <laughs> also, do I want to leave my fingerprints around? No. They could be taken, copied, copy what, my world. Can I just say whatever sure. happened to newsprint on oh, your right, newsprint. on your fingers? Yeah, well, yeah. here they here it is. It okay. still exists. Oh, I right. picked Calm up the down, Daily then. Telegraph. <laughs> yes. And other things and, that make uh, you sound like a colonel. Yeah, I picked up the, da- <laughs> picked no, up no, no, the Daily no. Telegraph. Telegraph. <laughs> Went round to see my friend. Not the Daily Smog. Express. Does the Daily Express still exist? 8, 12, 15. No, don't yes, do that. Yes, it it's does. too late now. But I've, I've, yeah. I say it's a paper I have only ever read when I've picked it up <laughs> off a seat get, when I'm getting off a plane. <laughs> yeah. I think that is their distri- distribution method. That's right. Yeah. Um, I've just been given a note to say that Sarah Champion's coming up next. <laughs> I've just said that. True. Is that it? Have what am finished? I, a publicist? We spent so long getting the newsprint off your fingers, we lost the link. I know, I've really got dirty fingers now, I must say. But, mm. and, but hey. Um, still, that's all lovely. <laughs> I think we're at the end of the show. <laughs> that is a broadcast. The thing you've ever said in your whole life. Yes, I'm hoping that'll be on our um, uh, tape for the, what, what they're called, the Radio Awards? The Radio Awards. What now they're called? Oh, right. What are they called I nowadays? Called. No, funny got, name. It's Arias. Yeah, the Arias. Well done. Yeah. All right. See? See? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, anyway, I don't hope they don't use that bit in my uh, <laughs> my time capsule. I've got dirty fingers, it's all lovely. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Still I'm that's sure all I lovely. must have said that before. I've got a combine point. harvester. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a combine harvester. Why have you gone to catering? <laughs> um... So, look, um, that's the uh, basically the end of the show. And um, I say basically because obviously I'm still speaking, but I mean, what I mean, I'm moving towards the climax of the show. And it's, but thank you for listening. Um, I know it's not always easy. <laughs> um, but um, I have a amount of people that tell me they listen to this show whilst driving their children to things like cricket and ballet and... Um, and distraction. Cage fighting, yeah. one bloke said to oh, me. Oh, really? Children, oh, the children go to cage apparently fighting. There's, apparently, there's a big children's that's, cage fighting circuit. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, and uh, like the bars obviously a bit close together. <laughs> <laughs> that's the basic difference. Weird. I, I was um, appalled and enthralled simultaneously. Mm. So, thanks for listening. And if um, and, and a lot of people, by the way, have sent in uh, stuff about uh, shows I've done this week at the Soho Theatre. Thank you for that, but I don't, I don't read out um, praise, as you know. But thanks. It means um, everything to me. 
Not everything. Everything is an exaggeration. But thank you. I didn't read them. I'm going off hearsay from uh, Emily. Just yeah. Said they got nice stuff. They were there might about have been you. some very derogatory stuff, but who needs that in their life? To hell with you. No, that was that. They did say lovely things. That was before the dirty fingers comment, however. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, let's look back on that as the golden age. <laughs> so, look, if the good Lord spares us and the creeks don't rise, we'll be back again this time next week. Now, get out. You're listening to the Frank Skinner podcast from Absolute Radio. Want your Frank fix a little sooner? Listen live every Saturday from 8am on Absolute Radio. Across the UK on digital radio, mobile apps and in London and the South East on 105.8 FM. Absolute Radio.